We're here live on the red carpet at TIFF 2022 at the premiere of The Sun with Hugh Jackman. And the movie is directed by Florian Zeller. In just a few minutes, we're going to talk to him. So stay tuned. So you, I heard that this made you change your approach to parenting after this movie. So, so tell us why. Well, the movie itself, I think starts a lot of conversations it has around my dinner table with my kids who have seen the movie, they're 17 and 22. And I think for me, it has made me feel it's okay to be vulnerable, to not know, to even share your own anxieties with kids. And I think prior to that, maybe I was a little more feeling that that would be a burden for them, um, that they would like probably want to feel confidence in their parents and strength, but actually, Honesty and vulnerability is probably more relieving for them because it tells them that they they can share their vulnerabilities, their mental health struggles, whatever they are. Um, and so, yeah, and I think it's changed me in a good way. I have to ask you one question. My show is an inspirational show and I created my platform to inspire. So what's the best advice someone ever gave you in your life? Oh, the best advice ever. Something that our, our audience can take. A life. A life lived in fear is a life half-lived. You can't just show up here with no warning. What's the problem? Has something happened? Yes. Nicholas has come to live with me and he's improving, but he's a little fragile. Is that why you came to see me? You're blaming me for what happened? He's different from the others. What makes you say that? Why don't you answer me? I do answer you. The look in his eye is disturbing. She wants to turn us against one another. Back then, there was so much joy in our family. I feel like a complete failure. If I'm like this, it's your fault. What have I done? What's, what's my fault? Haven't I always done everything for you? I have the right to reinvent my life! It is my life! Everything okay at home? Yeah. Everything's fine. We're here live on the red carpet at TIFF 22 at Butcher's Crossing, the premiere. In just a little bit, we're gonna be talking to Nicolas Cage. The movie is based on John Williams' novel, and it's a Western movie, so we're excited to talk to him. Hi, Nicholas, how are you? Well, thank you. So Butcher's Crossing, what kind of drew you to this role? Well, I grew up, uh, believe it or not, reading books like uh, Jack London's uh, The Sea Wolf, Call of the Wild, as well as Herman Melville's Moby Dick, and uh, Conrad's Heart of Darkness. And these books, I always thought there was a character in each of them, whether it be Ahab or Wolf Larsen or Kurtz, that would be fascinating to play because there are examinations of what can go wrong in the human condition. And again, in this book, Butcher's Crossing by John Williams, that happens with Miller. Now, with the, in this case, this is a story dealing with a time and a place where this group of people got to a point where the American buffalo almost went to near extinction. And that, what is that bloodlust? What is that greed? What is that ambition? What is that misguided philosophy that can get people's hearts to go that far in the wrong direction? And it was connected because the American buffalo was connected to the First Nations life source and the land. So you kill the buffalo, you kill the people. And that's tragic and that happened. And so I thought, well, let's, as, as ugly as that is, as horrific as that is, and it's gonna be my face playing that part, it needs to be reflected. Not that it's a message movie, but just that it's something that we need to remind ourselves so it doesn't happen again. But it is still happening. You know, it's happening with trees, it's happening with other life forms. It's happening with the planet, you know. Nick, my show is all about inspiration, so I have to ask you, I like to inspire my viewers. What's the best advice someone gave you in your life that inspired you? I think it was Martin Sheen. I, before Charlie or myself really started hitting it, I went over to, to visit and we were watching movies and Martin came into the room and he said, you know, if you want to have this life in cinema, the only thing that really matters is, did you like where you were and did you like the people you were working with? And and I thought at the time I didn't say it. I was like, well, that's not what it is. It's about the story. It's about, you know, the, the, the passion. But then I realized doing this as long as I have that he was right. And I do look for, do I like this person? Do I like where I am when I make a decision to make a movie?
50 years that you guys uh, grew up together. Yeah. So was it, did it make it more comfortable doing this movie with her? Of course, it's wonderful to work with your oldest friend. And uh, yeah, we've, we've worked together for years since, but I think that bond and the fact that we trust each other to really push each other and, and go into places that you wouldn't necessarily go with anyone else. No, it's just a lovely family feeling. And for our viewers that haven't watched the movie, what can they expect? And tell us a little bit about the synopsis. So it's a, the film is about um, a, a, a mother and a daughter. It's about a middle-aged uh, daughter who's an artist who takes her elderly mother uh, away for a weekend to celebrate her 75th birthday. But it's really about something that I think we can all relate to. It's about how do you prepare for your mother departing. How do, you, how do you prepare? I don't know, I mean, I still don't know, but you know, no, but we do, we wanna think about it because you know, a little bit of preparation is not a bad thing. So, but it's a ghost story. So it's set in this very kind of gothic, swirling mist sort of environment, a little bit like an old go ghost story from a, from a book. And um, yeah, it's just a little fable about a mother and a daughter and, uh, and how to survive things. And you know, the Toronto International Film Festival is one of the biggest festivals in the world. What's your favorite part of, about you know, meeting fans, being a part of it? That is my favorite part of Toronto. To be honest with you, I love Toronto for that reason. It's really the people's festival. It really feels like the audience owns it. And you know, other film festivals, which are glorious in other ways, are very often kind of industry affairs and they're very much run by the people who make the films and the people who write film criticism. But it feels to me like this is where you really meet fans. Yeah. And fans make films. I mean, fans make films have a real buzz about them. So it's a nice feeling meeting, meeting people who are gonna, who are kind of up for stuff they've never seen before. You know, I created my platform to inspire, to uplift. I have an inspirational show and I like to talk about, you know, celebrities' paths to success, not just celebrities, but anybody. So I want to ask you, you know, if you can name three things that have made you successful, who would you say they were? Have made you successful? Oh, well, if by successful, I'm not quite, I think one person successful is someone else is something else. For me, successful means happy. Yeah. I'm really happy and I'm very grateful to say that I've been happy for a very long time and I think identifying early on what makes me happy and then sticking to it yeah. which is specifically being around people who I feel really comfortable with who I feel free with and particularly in my work people that I really love and who I want to see every day. I want to see when we go on a world tour with a film and we wake up in the morning in a, in a hotel and we are down having breakfast. Those are the people I want to work with. So I think knowing what makes you happy and not being afraid to stick with it and, uh, and enjoy it, enjoy being happy. And don't think that just because, you know, the only way to be what you call successful is to be up against it and for things to be hard. I don't, I'm, I mean, there are other people who would disagree, but, but I think life's short. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're here at the Toronto International Film Festival 2022 at the inspection premiere. And in just a second, we're going to talk to Gabrielle Union. Let's take a look. Are you in trouble? No, I need my birth certificate. I need you to help me. I'm going to be a Marine. <laughs> Marine. No you ain't gayer than two left shoes, and everybody can see it. I am never giving up on us. We're here at the Toronto International Film Festival 2022. What are you most excited for? To finally 
release this baby to the world and, and hopefully it, it touches lives, it changes lives, and it saves a lot of children. Um, more than anything, I want people to walk out of this theater knowing that all of our children uh, hold value and are worthy of love and respect and opportunities and belief and protection um, and that none of our children are disposable because as parents, we are the first people to love those babies and to have those same people be the same ones to reject those children, it's not only heartbreaking, it, it, it's criminal. And um, hopefully we can save some lives and change some minds. And uh, for those who, who are firmly committed to their bigotry and, and um, not doing their jobs as parents, I hope for all of those children to find chosen family that loves them and respects them because there are so many people out there that love these kids and love these people um, that they don't even know. So if you are feeling uh, cast off and rejected, there's so many more people that love you and see you and want you to thrive. And I hope to be that this movie um, galvanizes some folks. And, and speaking of rejection, you know, this movie, um, you know, you're such an inclusive mom in real life. So was it difficult for you to play this character? It's dark. It's dark. I don't know people like this. Uh, I shouldn't. I know people like this. I don't like them. I think they're trash. Uh, so to play a character like this and find somehow find her humanity, I felt like if I could figure out her humanity, I might be able to reach more people. Thank you. Thank you guys.